Ryan Wingo surprisingly spurns Missouri in favor of Texas. Should the Tigers give up on his recruitment entirely? Well, let's talk about that and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Locked on college, the terms and conditions apply. And I suppose there should have been a terms and conditions apply or a card subject to change for you WWE fans out there. Something like that for Ryan Wingo's press conference yesterday, because I think a lot of Missouri fans like me, your central scrutinizer, certainly was expecting Ryan Wingo to commit to the Tigers yesterday. Now, if you're a Power Mizzou subscriber, you really follow recruiting and all the the rumor and innuendo closely out there on the interwebs. Well, there was definitely some smoke out there about Texas had had regained the lead at the 24 at the last hour there of recruiting in Wingo's recruitment and well obviously that smoke turned out to be fire as Texas has apparently closed the deal now it is of course important to point out as always in recruiting the ink is not dry it's not final until literally the ink is dry on that on that letter of intent I believe December 20th is national signing day this year and actually Ryan Wingo's father I believe even alluded to that fact that hey it's not over yet so I don't know are the Wingos just playing all of us like a fiddle it's quite possible and here's the thing I think a lot of Missouri fans right now are feeling a bit used were we used to get more money out of Texas is that where he wanted to go this whole time honestly who the heck knows you'd have to ask him yourself But a lot of this has, there's some hurt feelings there. And if you were Eli Drinkwitz, I could see why this would be a little bit of an annoying moment for you. But at the same time, should Missouri give up on Ryan Wingo and just say, let's move on, move on to different pastures? I would say absolutely not, because I had this whole episode actually recorded yesterday that is never going to see the light of day now because of what happened listen I'll take you behind the curtain for a second I didn't have time to do a show as Ryan Wingo was announcing so either could put out a show that was going to be old within two or three hours and irrelevant or I could roll the dice and gamble that Wingo was going to pick Missouri well I rolled the dice and unfortunately came up snake eyes But the point is, I had this whole opening about how Ryan Wingo being a a second five-star guy in one class for Missouri, man, that's a real needle mover and something that would have ripples on the recruiting trails for years to come. I really believe that. And indeed, there's obviously there's still time to go here. But just like with Williams Winery, I don't think he's going to flip. I think he's sticking with Missouri. And after all this, after all this buildup, I'd be really shocked if Ryan Wingo flipped away from Texas either. So I want to be consistent here and just make sure that we're all on the same page there. But at the same time, I just don't think if you're Missouri – Speaking of things that have ripple effects, you can't just give up on somebody like Ryan Wingo either because, number one, not that many five-star receivers, despite the fact that, hey, Missouri's gotten Luther Burden and Doriel Green Beckham the last decade plus. Well, five-star receivers don't come through your state every single year. That's for darn sure. So if you have a chance to get one, you keep pursuing them until the very end. And by the way, I'm sorry, this whole thing where the Wingos, if you want to accuse them of maybe seeking attention, trying to drive up the bargaining price on their young man, well, guess what? This is the new world order. 
NWO. We talk about nasty wideouts at Missouri a lot. How about the new dub, the, the NWO, the real new world order is that you got to get paid these days. NIL, if you can get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, upwards of a million dollars, perhaps multi millions of dollars, when you're a high schooler, before you've even stepped foot on a college football field, well, you should do that, quite honestly. When you look at it from that perspective, if he's just trying to drive up his value, if that's truly what's happening here, who could really blame him? Go get paid, young fella. It's just, you know, it's too bad when obviously Missouri's on the losing end of that. But honestly, you got to adapt or die in this new world, whether you like it or not. So if you're Missouri, you know, just keep playing the game play it out. I don't think Missouri is going to get Ryan Wingo after all this pomp and circumstance here, but you you don't give up because you never know who knows what could happen as this season goes along here in terms of on the field. Obviously, listen, I'm not even trying to be funny here. This is just an example. Steve Sarkeesian's had some interesting moments off the field. Let's just say Who knows what can happen is my own point, is my whole point here. So you continue to have open lines of communications with Ryan Wingo. Don't let your emotions get the best of you. Hey, when a girl passes you over for another prom date, maybe the guy's your best friend, whatever, you know what's what's best to do in that situation? Don't sell it. Don't act like you're spurned. Just move on and pursue the next young lady of your dreams in this case another wide receiver perhaps but as I was saying in that segment as well this applies both ways what I'm about to say here Missouri was going to have the luxury if it had if it had gotten Ryan Wingo's services of bringing him along fairly slowly unlike Luther Burden in 2021 it felt like well not only was Burden out of position on the outside he's much more suited to the slot as we've seen this year But as a true freshman, Missouri was just kind of force-feeding him the ball a little bit and almost felt obligated to do so, partially because that offense really needed a boost. Well, all those things are going to be a little different in 2024, or at least they would have been. So, on the other hand, now that Missouri isn't getting Wingo, presumably, well, actually, I think it's okay, especially for 2024. Missouri's looking pretty good in terms of the passing game and the receiver room, especially if Brett Norfleet continues to emerge, another target there at tight end to really help Brady Cook out. So a lot of things to like about the Missouri passing game moving forward. Obviously, we would absolutely love to have Ryan Wingo, but this is more of a disappointing day and not a devastating moment for Missouri. And on a happier note, would you believe we're less than two weeks away from actual Missouri basketball? In fact, a week from Monday, the Tigers will open up at Mizzou Arena against Arkansas Pine Bluff. And I got to say, in year two of Dennis Gates, I'm incredibly curious to see what type of product the Tigers put out there because obviously in year one, I think Dennis Gates surpassed everybody's expectations and while I've actually tried to maybe tamp down expectations a tiny bit just based on the difficulty of Missouri's non-conference schedule this season as compared to last I'm certainly not going to put any type of upside cap on Dennis Gates whatsoever I think the, the sky is really the limit for this team. So let's talk about a Missouri program that again is going to be tested very early in the season the second game of the year, two weeks from tomorrow, actually, against Memphis at home. I'll be really interested to see what kind of Friday night crowd Missouri gets in that ball game. Not a ton of prominent Friday night non-conference games at home that I can really think of over the years. So I'm really curious to see what kind of crowd it will be. It could be a fun one for all you students out there. Hope to see it full without question. But again, I don't want to put a cap on this team's on this team's upside whatsoever. And I wanted to explain more about why I think year two could be even better for Dennis Gates and company coming right up. But first I want to tell you about prize picks, the simplest and easiest way to play daily fantasy sports out there. A lot of their competitors can be a little bit overwhelming in terms of options. Well, how about let's just make it simple. 
pick more or less in terms of stats. Heck, you can even throw guys like Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey into the same square, for example. How about, do you want to go more than two touchdowns for Mahomes, more than 80 yards receiving for Kelsey? It's really as simple as that. So go to prizepicks.com slash college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy. And these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. And all you really have to do, if you have a current LinkedIn profile, it couldn't be easier. Add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your current LinkedIn profile to let everybody know that you're hiring. Not that you're trying to get your job, but no, you can go the other way on LinkedIn as well and hire others. And that you know what? LinkedIn jobs, they help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. And the more I think about it, I really think that Noah Carter might be the key to this Missouri basketball team this season, because other than Kobe Brown, to me, Kobe Brown is the obvious who, how are we going to replace not only his production, but just his skill set, a forward that can step out, knock down three pointers at a high rate, take guys off the dribble, be a facilitator, all of that good stuff. The type of versatility that made Kobe Brown a first round NBA draft pick this year. Well, to me, Noah Carter is the guy on the roster who has as close to that skill set. And really at times, while I liked Carter and Brown together, for sure, you could say that their skill sets were a little bit redundant, perhaps. So Maybe Noah moving into more of that Kobe Brown role perhaps will be even more comfortable and productive this season. You know, I think actually Carter is even more of an above the rim player for sure than Kobe Brown. So there's, I don't expect him to be a 45% three point shooter, but if he can even approach the high 30s, nearing him to 40%, obviously that would be a tremendous year for Carter. So I think he's a really important part of this team because. Otherwise, I think the rest of what Missouri lost, obviously a lot of really important guys that we lost last season that we all love, Trago Million, Golston, uh, Des Moines Hodge, of course, now of the Los Angeles Lakers too. But actually, I think this coming team has more depth, at least on paper, just a lot more bodies to throw out there and quality bodies too, guys who can shoot the basketball on the wing. And obviously, Missouri has more size this season too, notably with Connor Vanover. I just think Missouri is going to be a much more versatile and interchangeable team in terms of lineups than they were last season. So when they'll be able to play small when they want to and play at hyper speed when they want to, but also the Tigers can be a very large and lengthy team if they want to be as well. I think it just depends on which of the lineups meshes best and, of course, what matchups you have from night to night in the Southeastern Conference and in the non-conference schedule as well. So to me, this Missouri basketball team this coming season, as I've said, hey, if they win 22 games this season for instead of 25, I think that's that'd be a great season and could be absolutely as good as the one last year with 25. You just got to kind of put it all into context. <laughs> And let's transition back to football here for a minute because I don't think I've given the Missouri offensive line enough credit this season. I definitely said recently that I thought it's obvious Missouri has improved in terms of run blocking and pass blocking this year, but I'm not sure that that really hammers the point home hard enough, especially when you consider that Missouri had to replace its offensive line coach, Marquise Johnson, basically in the middle of spring practices for all intents and purposes. 
Less than ideal timing, for sure. Marquise ended up following a former Missouri de defensive coordinator, Ryan Walters, to Purdue, where he is now the head coach for the Boilermakers. So for Eli Drinkwitz to be able to find Brandon Jones, bring him over, and for Jones to be this successful this quickly with this offensive line, it's really pretty astonishing. I, I don't know what odds you would have given the Missouri offensive line looking this improved so far. And and yes, while at times the penalties have been too much for the line, no doubt. There have been some, some bad snap issues at times where the snap comes early before Brady Cook is ready for it more specifically. But again, in terms of pass blocking, it's really been night and day 2022 versus 2023. Now there has been a, 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 a there's been some personnel changes there to be sure. Obviously, Cameron Johnson followed Brandon Jones from Houston. He's been a big part of the improvement. You've got to think, but really just the improvement of guys already on the roster, like Connor Tolleson at center, and like Armand Mimbu at right tackle, who is a sophomore is going to be hopefully a great Tiger for many years to come. And just a quick, qu excuse me, just to clear something up quickly <laughs> easy for me to say on Armand Mimbu indeed it is Armand Mimbu at least according to Gerard Hamilton over at powermazoo.com I threw it out there on Twitter the other day I was going somebody the other day corrected me and said oh no it's Mimbao and I'm going wait it is because I've been saying Mimbu for two years basically so I'm glad to know that I was right. I wasn't completely insane. And to the people who like to send corrections with erroneous information, where do you get the chutzpah, number one? Let's maybe take it down a notch for all the incorrect correctors out there. You people are not my favorites. Let's put it that way. And coming up, you know I love a good hypothetical question. And there was one put on the internet yesterday that I was rather jealous of, actually a couple days ago now from Sidelines Mizzou. If you could add any former Mizzou football player to this year's roster, who would it be? Well, I have my answer coming up here in just a little bit. But first, I want to tell you about FanDuel because it's the NFL season, of course, and it's time to snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. Because the app is so easy to use with a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season in style. That's FanDuel official partner of the NFL. And by the Jace case, because these days, as always, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world and it's important to be prepared. And the Jace case is a personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can also customize your case and add additional life-saving medications based on your unique needs. So go to jacemedical.com and enter code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. That's promo code locked on at J A S E medical.com. So again, sidelines, Mizzou at S S N underscore Mizzou asked a couple days ago, if you could add any former Mizzou football player to this year's roster, who would it be? And I love this hypothetical question. I really do. And there's no wrong answer here whatsoever. If you were going to say Chase Daniel, the greatest quarterback in Mizzou history, hey, who could argue with you there? But at the same time, I don't think quarterback is necessarily a gigantic position of need for Missouri right now, right? I think if if you had a – I think – if you did the voting today, Brady Cook would be, what, the second team All-SEC quarterback after Jaden Daniels, I would say. I, I think I think that's a pretty fair, fair vote at this point in the process. Also, Missouri, as we've already gone over in my Ryan Wingo segment, 
plenty of depth at wide receiver right now. So as great as Jeremy Macklin is, for example, or Denario Alexander, you know, I not, wouldn't necessarily go there either. In fact, I would go to the defensive side of the ball. Give me Justin Smith, because as strong as Missouri's back end is defensively for the most part, especially on the corners, man, if you had Justin Smith on the edge of that Missouri defense just wrecking offensive lines like he did the absolute second he showed up on campus as a true freshman, my goodness, that would be a sight to behold and would instantly make that Missouri defense, I think, one of the best units in the country. I really do. I think he's that much of a difference maker. So that's my answer to that particular question. But also one quick quick note I hear I wanted to go out on. I did mention Jeremy Macklin earlier. Well, his cousin Jay Macklin spent one season with Missouri, at least one, I believe. He was part of Barry Odom's a Barry Odom recruiting class, but was retained by Eli Drinkwitz for his first season. I believe that was Jay's first season here. Why am I even saying I believe? Let's check it out. Yes, 2020, one catch for five yards for Jay Macklin with Missouri. But you know what? After sitting out all of 2021 with a red shirt, in 2022, suddenly Jay Macklin for North Texas, a Division I school, an FBS school, as our modern as the modern saying goes, but he was one of the big play guys in the entire country last year. Similar to Marquise Johnson, Jay Macklin was 16 catches for 380 yards last year. That's nearly 24 a catch. Well, you'd think that's kind of unsustainable year to year, right? Well, it turns out this season, Macklin hasn't quite averaged 24 yards a catch, but he has averaged 20 yards a catch on twice the volume, too, 33 catches for 658 yards and nine touchdowns. Yes, Macklin has had at least one touchdown in every ball game, three 100-yard games for the Mean Green so far. So Jay Macklin, you never know. Could he make his way back to Missouri at some point in the transfer portal? Hey, this isn't a this isn't a uh, prediction by any means whatsoever, but it certainly isn't without precedent that a guy could come back to his old school. Unlike Steely Dan, I think maybe Jay Macklin could come back to his old school. But you know what? Thanks for joining me as always here on Locked On Mizzou. Appreciate your patience here if you're an everydayer because I know I, I dropped the ball on Tuesday, didn't get a show out, and unfortunately Wednesday. Well, I had one in the can, and Ryan Wingo, he done kicked me in the groin. What can you say? That was not, that kind of messed up all my plans here the last couple days. But darn it, I pulled through anyway, didn't I? And thank you for pulling through for me, and keep, keep listening to this show. I really appreciate it. So until next time, I am John Miller, and thanks once again for listening to Locked on Mizzou.